Hey everybody, today we continue our topic of representation theory and we're going to explore a bit more of the correspondence between representations of an affine group scheme and co-modules of the associated coordinate ring. In particular, last time we established a correspondence between representations of an affine group scheme G on a k-module V and all the different OG co-module structures we've been put on B. And this was shown to be a bijective correspondence, which in particular sends the data of a natural transformation from G into N to V twiddle, where V twiddle here is that functor corresponding to that k-module V, and sends this to the composition of the natural map from V into V tensor A, composed with pi sub A of ID A, where here A is OG, and I'm thinking about G as being represented by A. So we're taking G to actually be equal to HA. So that the identity map from A to A is an element of G of A, which is the collection of all homomorphisms, k-algebra homomorphisms from A to A. So ID sub A, or sorry, pi sub A of, ID, of the identity on A is going to be some endomorphism of V tensored with A over K. And the first thing I want to do is I want to look at a couple examples to see exactly how this correspondence go. As our first example, let's think about the regular representation of an affine group scheme G. For the regular representation, again, my vector space is A, which is OG. And I want to think about what the associated co-module structure is on V itself. So that's going to be some sort of nice map going from V to V tensored with A over K. Well, we have a recipe for this exactly. I just need to know where my representation of OG sends the identity element. Remember here that pi sub a of the identity of it on a is going to be some sort of endomorphism of v tensored with a over k. Furthermore, v tensored with k with a over k is also going to be the coordinate ring of a certain extension of scalars, specifically the extension of scalars by a. So this will have to correspond via UNITA to a certain natural transformation from G of A to itself. Let's call that T. That means for every, this means for any A algebra R, we have to define some sort of transformation going from G A R to G A R. And if we remember that GAR is literally just G of R, thinking about every A algebra as also being a K algebra, which is homomorphisms, in particular, from A to R, which are K algebra homomorphisms. So we're looking at defining some sort of map like this. And now if we think back to the way that we defined the left regular, or the regular representation for this affine group scheme, we could do this for any particular G and not just the identity. I'm thinking about this thing here as being my element G, which is some function from A to A. Then this map below sends a function from A to R to the composition with the co-multiplication map. This is just how we defined the group product before on that HOM set. So in our particular case, G is just the identity map. Now if we think about where UNITA sends a natural transformation T, it sends it to the corresponding value of T on the coordinate ring of the functor. 
evaluated on the identity. I'm remembering now that g of a, or g extended to a, is represented by a tensor with a over k. So this means that pi a of any g inside of g of a is going to have to be represented by t of a tensored with a over k, which again, this represents g sub a, the extension of g to a, extension by scalars. And normally this will be evaluated on the identity map on a tensored with a over k. However, we've got a different representation of the functor uh, g sub a, in particular as k-algebra homomorphisms from a to r. So there's a natural isomorphism between k-algebra homomorphisms from a to r and a-algebra homomorphisms from a tensored with a over k to r which holds for any A algebra, not K algebra, but any A algebra R. Remember, R is an A algebra here. So instead of evaluating this on the identity of A tensored with A, what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate this on the inclusion map of A into A tensored with A, which I'll call iota. And what that does is it sends an element A to A tensored with 1. So this we know is just going to be Nabla composed with iota composed with g composed with our co-multiplication and in the special case when g is the identity this will be especially nice and I've realized here that I have a little bit of a typo this is not uh, in blue over here Nabla composed with f composed with g composed with delta there should have been a tensor product in the middle here, otherwise the maps don't really make very much sense. Um, similarly, uh, there should be a tensor product here. So I'm going to go ahead and fix all that up. Let's make that into a nice tensor product. And we'll make this into a nice tensor product as well. Sorry for that there. We know that this multiplication works. I just had a bit of a typo there. And this map here simplifies to the identity tensored with G uh, composed with the co-multiplication map. So in the special case, when G itself is the identity, we get pi A of the identity on A is actually just the co-multiplication map. So the co-module structure corresponding to the regular representation is literally just a map going from V to V tensored over K with A. Remembering that V is A here, all it does is it takes a V and sends it to delta of V. The co-module structure is just the structure induced by the co-multiplication. And we saw that through UNEDA. We can also use the correspondence between co-module structures of V and representations of G on V in order to prove our classification of the finite dimensional representations of G A. Again for this, I'm going to let K be a field of characteristic zero. And I'm going to think about the correspondence between representations of the additive group G sub A on V and OG co-module structures on V, where here V is a finite dimensional K vector space. I right, know that the coordinate ring is just the polynomial ring in a single variable. So for these OG co-module structures, I'm really looking at certain linear maps from V to the tensor product of V with the polynomial ring in one variable. For this to actually be a co-module structure, I also need the associated diagrams to commute, that is, for these two relations to hold.
Let's also remember that the co-multiplication on this Hopf algebra is given by sending an x to x tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x. Now we can express rho as some function taking a v to some linear combination of rho sub n v's x to the n's, where here these rho sub n's are going to be linear maps from v to v. And this just is because that rho is linear and this is how we can express any element in the tensor product. Then the first relation, making this a co-module, tells us the first relation tells us that the following sums must agree. And there's a typo here on the second relation. The row here should have just been an identity. So the second relation is telling us that rho of zip 0 of v should be v. In particular, if I take my first resulting equation from the first relation, it says that n plus 1 times rho of so n plus 1 of v is rho of 1 of rho of n of v. So inductively, we find that rho sub n of v is 1 over n factorial times the nth power of rho sub 1 of v. So this establishes a bijective correspondence from k linear maps from v to v to, k to kx co-module structures on v. And since v is finite dimensional, all but finite many of the rho sub n's need to be 0. So it's not just any k linear map, but nil potent linear maps. And the latter set is in bijective correspondence with representations of G A on V, the additive group. So this is actually a classification of the representations of the additive group. Now that we've talked about some examples, I also want to think back to the case of finite groups, where I've got a representation of a finite group G on some sort of vector space V. In this case, I can think about my representation as being a matrix-valued function on G. The way that I do this is I pick a basis for V, say E1 through EN, and with respect to this basis, I can write down any linear transformation as a matrix. In particular, pi G sends an EI to a linear combination of some AIJs, EJs, where the j goes from 1 to, infin to n, and the aij elements are on my field k. So in this way, I get an embedding, or a map, let's say a group homomorphism, from g into gl n of k. But I can view this also, I can view each of the aij's as a function going from g to k. In particular, the aij's will be dependent on the value of g here. So this function is such that any group element here is being mapped to the matrix whose entries are the aij of g's. These elements aij are called matrix entries of the representation. And they can, in general, be very nice, interesting functions themselves on G. In particular, in the case when G is a nice topological group, say with some, some analytic structure, maybe it's a compact group, then combining these with the Haar measure and the induced inner product can give us some sort of orthogonal basis for the integrable functions on G. So these things will come up in all sorts of very interesting situations and can be particularly important. It's nice to know that we can also have a scheme theoretic version of these matrix entries of the representation. The difference here is that my representation is going to have specific values for every k algebra r. So I'm really defining some sort of matrix valued function for every particular, particular r. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to define a, i, j sub r and it's going to be a function which goes from the group GR into R. And I'm going to define this just the way that I would have before. 
specifically, I'm going to let pi sub r of g take my basis element, ei, to the linear combination from j equals 1 to n of aij sub r of g times e sub j. And this definition is really only going to make sense when my module v here is free as a k module. Otherwise, the notion of basis really doesn't make sense. But this isn't any trouble, in particular in the case when k is a field. So these a, i, j, r's actually all come together into some sort of natural transformation, a, i, j, which is going to be a natural transformation from the functor g to the functor which takes a k-algebra, r, and just returns that same k-algebra. That's actually a1. So in other words, these aij's are going to be inside the collection of natural transformations from g to a1. By definition, that's the same thing as the group ring of g. So how do I choose those elements in the group ring of g? Well, I always use the same sort of strategy. In order to figure out what those elements are, I could just use the specific case when r is equal to a, which is our usual uh, notation for the group ring of g. And then I just set aij, aij inside of the group ring to be the particular elements where pi sub a of the identity on a sends ei to. And at that point, it's very easy to check that pi r uh, of g sends ei to the linear combination j equals 1 to n of aij sub r of g times ej. It just follows from naturality. But we get the same sort of behavior these representations as matrix valued things. It's just that we have this inherent dependence on the k algebras going on in the background too. Several standard constructions for representations can be extended into the affine group scheme case as well. One such construction is tensor products. Starting out with two representations, pi and pi prime, we can define the tensor representation denoted pi tensor pi prime by having pi tensor pi prime sub r of g act on simple tensors by, by tensor product as well. We can also define the dual of a representation, which is a representation pi v on v v, nay I should say pi check on v check, where here v check is the dual space of k and the action is given by sending v dual tensor with r to v dual tensor with r, and sending in particular a linear functional tensor with 1 to the new linear functional, which sends a vector v to the linear functional, as before, evaluated on the inverse of pi r of g acting on v tensor 1. The correspondence between representations of g on v let's just say finite dimensional representations of G with OG co-modules sends a representation pi on a vector space V or k-module V to the corresponding k-module with the o corresponding OG co-module structure. It also sends tensor products to tensor products and sends duals to duals. If we define the tensor product of some co-modules and the dual of a co-module appropriately. So let's do that. Let C and C prime be co-algebras with co-modules V and V prime respectively. And co-module structures, rho from mapping from V to V tensor C and rho prime mapping from V prime to V prime tensor C. Then we define the tensor product to be the vector space V tensor V prime as a certain co-module on C tensor C prime. The co-module structure is just given by the map from V tensor V prime to V tensor C tensor V prime tensor C prime induced by taking the tensor product of the two previous co-module structures. And when C is equal to C prime, 
we have an algebra homomorphism from C tensor C to C, which in turn induces a co-algebra structure on V tensor V prime over C, excuse me, a co-module structure on V tensor V prime. So I can view V tensor V prime as a C co-module.